Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this DCS F16C Viper update, we'll talk about the new primary features coming to the Viper. New ALR65M radar warning receiver features, an animated tail hook, and the alternate landing gear handle. First, we'll take a look at some of the new features coming to the Viper's radar warning receiver, or RWR, also called raw gear. Some of these items were introduced earlier, but I'll take this opportunity to talk about them now. Let's get started. Okay, so first, let's take a look at the uh, RWR display here. And in the very center, we're going to have indications for both the search and the altitude functions. And those can be enabled or disabled down here on the threat warning auxiliary panel. So we have our search button here, and we have a flashing S for search. And when this is uh, flashing, it means that any uh, acquisition radars will be filtered out from the display. But if we go ahead and press it, we have a solid S. Now we're going to see acquisition radar. So you see the S's as well as the stylized uh, radar dishes, which indicate uh, early warning radars or EWRs. Uh, we can also see we have an S in the center. Below that is our altitude button. And if we press it, we may see low. It simply means that uh, ground-based emitters are going to be prioritized on the scope. If we disable it with no indication of low, it means it's going to prioritize airborne emitters. Let's go ahead and go to low again. And we do that in the center. If we have both search and the altitude low functions enabled, it's going to mipple in the center between S and L. We also notice that the symbols are a bit smaller now. And also, again, we have the stylized uh, indication for uh, early warning radars. Now, when an airborne or ground-based radar emitter is first detected, we're going to have new visual and audio indications. First, when it's first detected, the symbol is going to pulsate in size between half size and full size, which you can see here with the SA-2. Further, when an airborne emitter is first detected, it's going to have a higher frequency alert tone than, say, a ground-based emitter, which is going to have a lower frequency tone, which you can see here with an SA-15. Now, a new symbol on the scope is going to be a square around a radar emitter that has you locked, which you can see here with that SA-15. And just as before, if the radar is guiding a missile, they'll have a circle around it that's flashing. One of the other big changes is going to be the radar guided missile alert tone. Now before, as you probably recall, it just kind of scrams at you the whole time you have a radar guided missile inbound. It's going to change now in that once you get launched on, you'll hear about eight high pitched beeps. Then it'll go silent for about 15 seconds. And if you're still being tracked with a uh, missile in the air, it'll repeat those eight beeps, but at a lower tone. So let's take a look at this in uh, operation. Okay, eight beeps. Silent for 15 seconds. And then those are the eight beats at a lower tone. And we'll just repeat that as long as we have a uh, radar guided missile inbound. The target separate button has also got an overhaul. So now when you have multiple emitters overlapping each other and hit the target separate button, it'll separate them along azimuth instead of heading now. Now, last on the RWR, we can hit the system test button, which will run a built-in test or a bit on the RWR. Now, coming a little bit later, the last big item on the RWR is going to be the handoff function, which is going to allow you to cycle through the priority emitters on the RWR. And when you do so, actually hearing that pulse repetition frequency of the individual radar. That's going to come a little bit later once we have a library for all those different radars created.
Now, in addition to all the raw gear, we've also done a couple changes to the cockpit. The first is the ability to lower the tail hook, which we can do here with the hook switch. We set it down, we don't drop the hook. If we go up, it'll raise it just a little bit. To fully raise the tail hook, you have to land and talk to the uh, ground crew and run the repair to completely raise the tail hook. Now, I know many of you are going to ask, but right now we're not planning on doing an airfield arresting system. It's something we may look at a little bit later, but right now it's not in our at least our immediate plans. And the last item for today's video is the alternate landing gear handle in case you have a hydraulic failure. Now both the alternate landing gear and the hook use a compressed air bottle to uh, blow those down. And all you have to do is uh, right click on the handle and lower the gear. So folks, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thanks.